so I will be the first to admit that I am easily influenced. I like to be, you know, with the times. I like to be in the loop. So if something's trending on BookTok, I normally try to read it unless it just sounds like something so out of my interest that I don't want to waste my time. But I have read a lot of trending books in my time. So today I am going to be ranking them, the good, the bad, the in-between, and we'll see how it goes. First, we have the tiers. At the very top, we've got Perfection, No Notes, Speaks for Itself. This is the best book talk has to offer, and I will scream about them, recommend them forever. Next, we have Slay. These books are good, not perfect, not favorites necessarily, but they slay, and I like them. Next is I Forgot That You Existed. This is the mid, the forgettable, the so-so, just books that didn't really stick with me, that I don't think about. Not necessarily bad, just I forgot that they existed. Next up is Not Funny Haha, -ha, Funny Weird. And these are books that are bad or leaning towards bad that I didn't like or are straight up, you know, not funny haha, -ha, funny weird. I feel like this category doesn't make sense, but once I start sorting the books, it will. <laughs> then we have Electric Chair because that is what these books deserve. And lastly, I had to make this tier because there were some things I know I couldn't leave out, but it is, I don't think I can do it. And it's books that either I didn't finish or for reasons that I will explain, I don't think I will ever pick up unless money's on the table. Okay, starting off strong with People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. So it's not one of my favorites of hers, but it is still going straight to the sleigh category. Uh, I did reread it this summer and Alex actually reminds me a lot of my boyfriend. So I think I liked it a lot more this time around, but still not one of my favorites. Next is Get a Life, Chloe Brown. This might be a hot take, but it is going in I Forgot That You Existed. I thought I was gonna like it a lot more than I did. I just found the characters didn't really speak to me. I didn't like the flow and the pacing. And I just found when I wasn't bored, I was just reading it to like get it over with. But I didn't dislike it enough that I'm writing off the rest of the books in the series. So there's something there. It just didn't stand out to me. Now we have Every Summer After by my Canadian queen, Carly Fortune. This is also going to the sleigh category. It's kind of like an adult version of The Summer I Turned Pretty, which I am very here for, very good, and definitely recommend. It's like the perfect sitting on a dock summer read. This is unfair, I will say. I couldn't finish this book, but I don't feel right giving it electric chair, but I read enough of it and I watched the movie, so I feel like it doesn't belong and I don't think I can do it. So, you know, it's going in not funny, haha, -ha, funny, weird. Just not great. I, I like the movie, so I don't know what it was about the book that didn't do it for me. But I just thought it was kind of bad. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll give, I'll give it another go, maybe. Maybe I'll listen to the rest of it in an audiobook format so it kind of speeds it up. Because I don't like not finishing books, but for now, it's there. Calling the Hunger Games a book talk book feels kind of silly to me because I read it like probably more than 10 years ago now. Definitely. Oh my god. <sighs> I reread it when it was trending on TikTok and it is going right up to perfection. No notes. It is, it is a perfect book and I'm not just saying that because I was like a peak fangirl for it like genuinely from a literary perspective I think it's a pretty perfect book and it's gonna be a classic I mean I was taught it in school when it was like fresh like it had just come out when I was reading it in school and I really think it's gonna be like Lord of the Flies where like my kids are gonna be be reading it and analyzing it because it's just perfect. Shadow and Bone is going in I forgot that you existed. Not because I forget about it, but because it didn't stand out to me. I couldn't finish the series because I didn't like it enough. I didn't watch season two of the show. Honestly, I read it because I like Ben Barnes. I think I've mentioned this on this channel before. I really struggle with fantasy. I feel like I 
allowed myself to understand the wizarding world and Pan Am and everything else. I'm like, I can't. I just, I have the knowledge of those worlds and I, my brain is too, too overwhelmed. But Shadow and Bone, nothing to write home about for me. I forgot that you existed. Now my favorite Emily Henry book, also reread it this summer. We're going with Beach Read, straight to perfection, no notes, because it is an amazing book. And I thought I was a little biased. I was like, oh, it's my first Emily Henry read. Maybe I just have kind of like nostalgia for it. But no, when I reread it this summer, it, it holds up. It's so good. I love January and Gus's relationship. It's, it's sad. It's happy. It's flirty. It's fun. Like this book just has everything I want and everyone should read it. Normal People is going into Slay because, mm, yeah, Slay. I'm happy with that. I feel like I didn't love it as much as some people do, but I did enjoy it. It's very good. I see, I see the appeal, but like it didn't change my life, you know? Red, white, and royal blue. I like this. I will read anything where it's like a, a fun modern spin on royalty. If anyone has any recommendations for books that are like that, but aren't the royal we, because I tried to read that and it just wasn't doing it for me. Maybe I should read American Royals. That's a series, right? Anyways. Red, white, and royal blue, you are going to the sleigh category because it's it's short, sweet, great. I love it. We've gotten to our first Colleen Hoover and we are going to I Don't Think I Can Do It with Ugly Love because I have not read it. I have no intentions of reading it based on everything I have seen and heard about it and it will not catch me so that's where it belongs a wildfire by hannah grace my instinct is to put it in electric chair but i don't think it was that bad i'm looking back on it i don't i did not like it but i don't think i was like mad about it so we're gonna put it here in not funny haha funny weird just because it yeah, it was just kind of a whole lot of nothing, unnecessary miscommunication, the characters kind of just felt unappealing. <laughs> I just didn't like it. I went in with an open mind. I tried and would not recommend. The summer I turned pretty, back to my roots for a second, I am wrapping the whole, the whole series together because some of them are slay. And one of them is Electric Chair. So that being said, The Summer I Turned Pretty belongs in Not Funny Haha, -ha, Funny Weird. Honestly, the last book is just off the rails, bizarre. I'm very excited to see where the show goes with it because it's insane. Um, so yeah, it's staying there. Next up, we have Book Lovers, also by Emily Henry. I am also going to put that in perfection, no notes. Uh, yeah, rivals slash enemies to lovers done very well. Characters have good chemistry. I just, I love how her books, all the protagonists, like they have something going on in their lives and that is kind of the priority. Their journey is really the, the main thing in the books, even if the romance is important as well. I just love her books. They do it for me. Another Hannah Grace story. We've got Icebreaker, which is going in. I don't think I can do it because I tried. Again, I tried. I went with an open mind. I casually enjoy watching hockey and think the players are often pretty cute. So I thought, why not? It is so long and the characters were really starting to annoy me and I just I I couldn't finish it I will I again I want to give it another try maybe audiobook it the characters were just so flip floppy and yeah frankly annoying I couldn't deal with it so maybe a break was all I needed icebreaker you haven't 
You haven't seen the last of me, I promise. A Little Life is tough because there are problems I have with this book, but it still affected me very deeply. I think it was well written. I would recommend it depending on the person, what they're looking for. There's just a lot going on. There's a lot to unpack. Like there are parts of this book that belong in every category, but I am going to put it in Slay or no, I don't think it belongs in Not Funny Haha. -ha. Yeah, let's let's put it in Slay just because I think it's a very impactful book. It left quite an impression on me, even if I don't I don't look back on it fondly. You know, it's it's depressing. It's a lot. It's heavy. I do have some gripes with how some things are handled, but overall, slay? Cautious slay? Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. I don't even know if this is a book talk book. I think I just read it in the midst of reading a bunch of book talky things, but I'm going to keep it here anyways, and it's going to perfection no notes. I think this is a really great book to read if you're a woman in your 20s or 30s. It just, it left quite an impression on me. I think about it pretty often. It really did something to me. It changed me, made me appreciate my life, my friends, my family, and my youth more, I guess. It ends with us. How timely. We're going to electric chair with that one. Hate is a very strong word, but I might hate this book. And a lot of my hatred for this book definitely comes from the weird fandom around it, this chaos around the movie, the coloring book that never was. I just, oh, I just don't understand the people wearing merchandise for this book. I just think it's weird the the way this book has gathered a fandom in such a way that makes it seem like a fun fun romantic comedy I guess there's little to no redeeming qualities for me I think it's important that it got a conversation started around domestic violence but I think that it is done in such a bad way the character names are ridiculous. I think the Ellen stuff is dumb. I know they fixed this in the movie, but the fact that Ryle is like a 29 year old brain surgeon is ridiculous. I'm sorry, I know a lot of people like it, but it it is not my cup of tea. Happy Place by Emily Henry is going into Slay. Not one of my favorites, but very good. Liked it a lot. A Court of Thorns and Roses. I am scared to say this on the internet, but it is going in. I don't think I can do it. I really don't like fantasy all that much. Two of my friends who I like trust very intensely with reading recommendations did not like this. So it's gonna go and I don't think I can do it because I, I don't think it's for me. And all of the negative things I've seen about it are things that resonate with me like I I agree with the criticism out of context which is unfair I recognize that it's unfair but I just feel like there's so many books so little time it's not gonna happen it happened one summer this is a nice book I like it a lot I like the sequel as well if no one's read it I I don't know what it's called and it's somewhere in front of me but Oh, hook, line, and sinker. That's it. It's it's also very good. Uh, I like these characters. And it is going into Slay. The smutty scenes are a little interesting at times. <laughs> like, I don't know, some of the dirty talk was making me cringe a little bit. And I read a fair amount of, like, smutty books. <laughs> but yeah, some of it was a little... A little icky to me but if you can get past that it's a really fun book i like it they both die at the end this this is a throwback this is like i feel 2020 2019 book talk but it is going to be in i forgot that you existed which is unfair because i just admitted that i read it a long time ago but i liked it a lot when i read it i did feel like 
it impacted me at the time, but I don't really think about it anymore. I don't have a lot of lingering thoughts or feelings about it, but I would recommend it. It's good, just just doesn't doesn't stick out to me. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It's basic, I know, but we got to go to perfection. No notes. This was a book that impacted me when I was reading it and I still feel that impact now. It's just so good. Taylor Jenkins Reid really does does no wrong to me. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is just so so good. I cannot recommend it enough. Tender is the Flesh. Again, I don't even know if this is a book talk book. I feel like I saw two TikToks about it and thought it belonged on this list. So it is 100% going in, not funny haha, -ha, funny weird, because it is weird. If you don't know what it's about, it's a dystopian novel where all the animals have become infected and poisonous for humans to eat. So instead of eating animals, humans like of a lower class are basically raised as cattle for cannibalism purposes. And that is weird enough as it is, but this book is so dark and twisted. I thought it was gonna make me like nauseous at points. It didn't. Maybe maybe read some like trigger warnings or reviews before you read it if you think this is gonna be something that grosses you out. Cause I wouldn't say it grossed me out. It like emotionally made me <laughs> made me uncomfy. So funny weird. If we were villains, straight to the top. I love this book so much. It is the perfect like academia mystery. I might reread it this fall because it's it's a very fall book. I don't even know how to describe my love for this book. The characters are amazing. The mystery, the backdrop, like I just adore everything. All the pieces that made this book come together to be what it is. It's, it's just phenomenal and no, no notes. My Year of Rest and Relaxation is a book that I thought I was going to adore. I thought it was gonna change my life. I thought I was gonna make it my personality. And I didn't. I I liked it, but it's going and I forgot that you existed. This isn't beef with it, but they you <laughs> how do I not spoil this? It's kind of obvious what's where they're gonna go once they give away the <laughs> the year and the location of this book but they use a historical event as a narrative device that doesn't quite land for me that's a really bad job of explaining it but i don't want to spoil it and i still feel like it's very obvious what i'm talking about it was just odd to me like it was happening and i went okay i definitely saw this coming but why is it happening there is not a good enough reason to be doing this right now so I forgot that you existed, didn't didn't stick with me, didn't change my life. Six of Crows, I, I don't even think people on the internet are gonna be mad at me about this. I think my friends are gonna be mad at me about this because it is going in, I don't think I can do it. I hate this because I've heard it is better than Shadow and Bone by almost everyone who has read both books, but I just, I was so bored of the Shadow and Bone series, the show has been cancelled, like I just have no motivation or interest in reading it. Never say never, but for now I have, I have no interest in reading Six of Crows just because the Shadow and Bone series bored me to tears. But I, I feel like I may be missing out, so maybe I will give it a go. When I saw that We Were Liars was trending on TikTok, I felt a billion years old because I read it when it came out and I have not read it since, but um, I'm torn between Slay and Perfection, no notes, but I'm gonna put it in Slay just because I haven't read it recently and I would not be confident to call it a perfect book. I remember I wasn't sure what to make of it, but once it got going, oh my god, I love this book so much. I kind of want to read it again as an adult, but I feel like it won't be as good 
because I know what happens. So I don't know if it's worth it, but We Were Liars is definitely a slay, possibly a perfection, no notes, but it's it's been too long. The Viscount Who Loved Me, aka the second Bridgerton book. This is Anthony and Kate's story and it's going in not funny haha, -ha, funny weird. All of the Bridgerton books are not funny haha, -ha, funny weird. All of the ones I've read, even the ones that I like belong in that category. They're just, if you like the show, don't read the books expecting the show because they are quite accurate to the times. Like the misogyny is rampant. The women don't have a ton of agency. The men widely aren't very nice in these books. So yeah, it's going in not funny haha, -ha, funny weird. Just because it's 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 a little silly goofy, but they are they're entertaining enough. A good girl's guide to murder. Uh, um, I forgot that you existed. Again, this isn't bad. I just it's a YA and now that I'm an adult, I don't love why if you do, that's fine. Like I am very jealous. There are so many books that I never read as a teenager that I wanted to. And now I feel like when I try, it just doesn't hit the same for me. And yeah, overall, this is a good book. It just, it just wasn't amazing. So it's going in, I forgot that you existed because it is kind of forgettable to me. Okay, Daisy Jones and the Six, I need to explain myself. So I, I like this book a lot. I think it's excellent. I love the way that it's like told through these interviews. But there have been multiple times since I've read it that I've had the thought of, oh, I should read Daisy Jones and the Six next. When I have literally read it. So, but for like a brief second, I'm like, oh, I should read it. And I, I think it's because I've had people rant and rave about the audiobook. So I think it's whenever I'm scrolling through audiobooks, I have that thought. So I'm like, do I put it in? I forgot that you existed, but no, I am putting it in Slay because I'm just, I'm just a little confused sometimes, but it is excellent, except for the ending makes me really mad. And I think the ending is controversial. People have very different opinions. If it ended in a different way, it would go in perfection, no notes, but it is going into slay. Oh, you know what? The book ends better than the TV show. I feel like the TV show tainted me, but we're gonna, let's keep it in slay. I'm happy with that. Okay, The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This is actually one of the first trending book talky books I picked up, I think, and I love it. I think it's very good. So it's going to the slay category. I don't remember a ton of it. It was a while now, but it made me pick up more Christina Lauren books. I remember I was telling people in real life about it. So it is staying there, even though it has kind of kind of fizzled in my mind. I just really remember liking the characters. I loved their banter. The reason they were enemies, it was like miscommunication, but I think it was so silly and a realistic way that you would hold a grudge against someone that it really worked for me and I just listened to the audiobook sequel narrated by Harry Shum Jr. partially which was also very fun so I recommend both of those. Lessons in Chemistry I finished it like less than 24 hours ago and finished the show like two hours ago so the recency bias is pretty intense but that being said um, I, I'm i gonna put it in perfection, no note. Okay, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna put it in perfection, no notes. That might change the more I think about it. I know I'm just like excited about it right now. It's just great. It made me sad at times, but it also made me laugh. 630 the dog is like the best character ever. And this is like a book that I feel like appeals to primarily women, but women of like all ages and I think that's a beautiful thing. It brings people together. Okay, the love hypothesis. <laughs> Every time I see this cover I just want to laugh because it is so obviously Raylo fan fiction which oh god. Any other Star Wars fans like forget about that sometimes and then the scene of them kissing like rushes back to you and you just get a chill up your spine. That being said, not funny haha, funny weird oh that feels a little mean but mm, 
no i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it there because i did not forget that it existed but it is not a sleigh i just think it could have been could have been better the smutty scenes were a bit weird at times and it kind of felt formulaic it was just one of those books where i was like he's so tall and grumpy and she's so small and sunshiny but there wasn't there wasn't much else going on like not a ton of substance i love the invisible life of addy larue so i'm putting it in perfection no notes i do have one note and that is i don't say this very often but i think this book could have benefited from being a bit longer i did feel like i was missing a lot when it ended it wasn't bad writing it was a intentional storytelling choice so that's why I'm keeping it in perfection, no notes. Like that, that plot twist, I, I was gagged. I still remember reading it, gasping, and then texting my best friend like, oh my god, I can't believe this just happened. It, it's a great book. The Spanish Love Deception might be my least favorite book ever. So obviously it's going to Electric Chair. It's just a worse version of the Unhoneymooners now that I look at them on the same tier list. Like this book is so bad. It is too long. It's poorly written. The characters have no good reason for disliking each other. It just comes off as unprofessional and petty and a useless plot device, I guess. The characters are so drab and one-dimensional that whenever they're having a touching moment or there's a smutty scene, it just feels so fake and forced and ridiculous. And I, oh, and I wanted to like this book. I thought it sounded fun. I was into it and then I wasn't. Lastly, we have The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, The Hunger Games prequel. I didn't know what to think about this, but then I ended up really enjoying it. So we are going to put it here in the sleigh category because I think it's very entertaining and very good. Snow is just such an interesting character and to have his point of view the whole time is is kind of fascinating. We love an anti-hero. Is he even an anti-hero? I don't think so. He's just a villain, <laughs> but it was good. I liked it. Suzanne Collins doesn't miss. There's only two books in the electric chair category, which I feel like I wasn't expecting. I guess there are a lot of books like Get a Life Chloe Brown and Shadow and Bone and The Hating Game that I did not enjoy, but I can see why other people did and they didn't like, they didn't make me mad. So electric chair is the books that made me viscerally angry. This is my definitive ranking of all of the book talk books I have read or at least tried to read or looked into. And <laughs> I hope I didn't offend anyone. These are my opinions and everyone's everyone's got their own tastes, their own preferences. I hope you enjoyed listening to me rant and ramble and I will see you next time. Bye.